By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you more magic from the Lord of the Jank tournament. Now this is a budget old school magic tournament. If you would like to know the details like what do you mean by budget? How did you determine the price of the decks and the individual cards? Please check the description below because there I explain exactly that. So if you're curious about that, check the description below. Now in this matchup, I am playing against MTG Phil and he's bringing a Merfolk control deck to the table and I'm still playing with my zombie disco deck. This is my third matchup in my pool. I'm together with four other players. So far I've won one game, two to one, and I've lost one game one to two. So um, before I move over to the deck tech, I would like to point out that there, uh, in the description below, you can find a timestamp that says MTG games. So you can click on there and that will take you straight to the games. Also, you can find links to the individual deck tech. So you can find the deck, deck tech of MTG Phil and you can find the deck tech of my deck, Zombie Disco. Okay, so here I'm going to continue with the deck techs and I'm just going to start with my deck, Zombie Disco. Okay, and here we see the picture of my deck, the Zombie Disco. So this deck is built around Zombie Master. So th that's all there is to it. It's really a nice budget brew. So if you want to play this, um, it's easy to get the cards. It's pretty affordable, especially for old school. Uh, zombie Master is um, a card that gives all the other zombies regeneration for one black. And it also gives all the zombies Swamp Walk. And it is a two, three, those are the stats. And it's two black and one to cast. As you can see, I'm playing with a full playset. So basically what I want to do is give all my zombies, including the other zombie masters, Swamp Walk and Regeneration, and my whole the whole strategy of the deck is built around those two abilities. So let's first zoom into Swamp Walk. So as you can see, I'm playing with four Evil Presence. So Evil Presence in Enchant Land for one black, turns target basic land into, or any land actually, into a basic swamp. So I can give my opponent a swamp. My creatures have Swamp Walk, so they're unblockable. And that's how I can win the game. As you can see, I've also added two Bokrafts main. There are also two Bokrafts in my sideboard, I believe. And the Bokraft, of course, is a 3-3 with Swamp Walk. So that already has Swamp Walk. So even without the Zombie Lord, I have two unblockable creatures in my deck, basically. So that is one part of the strategy. The other part of the strategy, the bigger part, I should say, is regeneration. As you can see, I'm playing with four Nevenuros discs. When I blow up the disc, everything gets destroyed. Luckily for me, all my creatures or most of my creatures will probably have regeneration because of the zombie master. So I'll just play, pay one black for each zombie and they will stick to the board. They're alive, my opponent loses their creatures and next turn I can attack and everything is open. Also Will-O-The-Wisp really fits in well with the strategy since Willow already has regeneration from itself. Two other cards that really fit well with this Nevenerals disc strategy are the two anime deaths. So the anime deaths are gonna give me the opportunity to actually bring back some of the dead dead bodies of my opponent and put them under my control. So of course then the dream is to for example take a Shivan. I think it would have been nice if anime dead would read it's now a zombie in addition to its other creature types. But hey, this is old school. We didn't have that tech at the time, but I think flavor wise, it would have been a nice one. Um, if we look at the rest of the deck, we do see a few issues with that Nevenerals Disc strategy, and I, I am aware of that. For example, Evil Presence and Nevenerals Disc doesn't really work that well. Unholy Strength, Nevenerals Disc doesn't work that well. You know, you're just basically destroying, the same goes for, for Bad Moon, you're destroying your own enchantments. You don't want to do that. So it's pretty important to kind of time your Nevenerals Disc appropriately and only to do it when it's absolutely necessary. But the great thing is I'm in control of the disc. So you know what, if I don't have to blow it or want to blow it, I'm just not gonna do it. So this is my deck, just keeping it short because you've probably seen this deck already in the other Lord of the Jank videos. We're now going to continue to look at the deck of MTG Phil, Merfolk Control. And here we see part of the deck of Merfolk Control because uh, unfortunately, MTG Phil did not have a deck photo. The nice thing is he did make a movie with a deck deck about this uh, this specific deck and it's actually on YouTube. So I'll put it in the description below. So if you want to know the ins and outs of this deck, then you can check that special deck deck video that MTG Phil made. It's really interesting where he 
takes you through the steps and how he made the deck and what his goal is. So I'm kind of going to give you a summary of that. The interesting thing about this is this is not a merfolk aggro deck. Usually when people play mono blue with Lord of Atlantis, what they want to do is they've got Surrendip uh, Afrits, they've got Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, they've got Boomerangs, they've got counter spells that we see in this picture as well. And what they want to do is just kill the opponent as fast as possible and win the tempo game. That's what they want to do. Well, Phil has really chosen a different strategy. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just use Lord of Atlantis as a great creature because it is a great creature. Two blue gives all your other mirror folks plus one, plus one, and I walk. That is pretty solid. And then I'm going to build a control shell around that. So he's playing with control magics. He's playing with counter spells. He's playing with... Um, with both of the tomes, so the little book and the big book. So he can draw cards, he can select cards. As you can see on the right here, there is a uh, Vesuvian Doubleganger. Um, you can actually see those books I was talking, talking about, the Jam Day Tome and the Jalem Tome. He's playing with four Mishra's Factories. Uh, we also have another picture. Here we go where we can see Dance of Many and Clones. So he really wants to Dance of Many and clone his Lord of Atlantis or possibly his Mishra's Factories. He's also playing with a Vesuvian Doubleganger. And another interesting thing about this is, remember, he really went more on the control train. And you can see that by actually two cards that are not visible on this uh, picture. So I'm just going to put it on the screen here for you. Spell Blast. He's playing with a full playset of Spell Blast. So he's got four Counter Spells and four Spell Blasts. So that's a lot of Counter Magic. I guess the Spell Blasts especially are there to protect his creatures, you know, to protect all the clones of the clones and the Vesuvians of the Vesuvians. So this could be quite interesting to see how he's going to use those spell blasts in our game. And also he's playing with four Nevenerals discs, or I believe there are four, perhaps there are three, I'm not quite sure now, but this is really interesting because as you know, I am playing with a full playset of Nevenerals discs as well. So this could be a very wacky matchup where we just, play out our, you know, our cards. And at a certain point, we're like, oh, I'm behind on the board. I'm going to blow the disc and we're going to start all over again. And the, and the thing is, we can do that both. I do think that um, a small plus for Phil here is that Phil, of course, has some counter spells. So he can try to counter my Nevenerals discs, um, you know, when I cast them. It's, it's, it's going to be, to be quite interesting, you know, to see how this uh, match will end up. And also for me, it's going to be interesting to play against a merfolk control deck when i think about you know merfolks and mono blue i instantly think about um you know aggression and and aggro and tempo and and he's he's really trying to approach the merfolk strategy uh from another from another angle going more for the control so i think it's really nice um this is kind of the deck deck that i can i can give you um, like i said if you want to know more about this deck there's a link in the description below a linking to the deck deck movie that mtg phil made himself on his own youtube channel his youtube channel in general is actually pretty sweet it's really nice if you like old school there are some deck decks he's got some stories um he's even got some games i believe although i'm not sure uh, but it's really a nice place to um to hang out and have a look if, if you're into old school so definitely i can definitely uh, recommend mtg phil's channel so if you want to know more about that check the description below and i guess here we are now ready to uh to start and to move on to the actual match let's go to game number one game number one i'm sitting on the left look at me go here dark ritual into scave zombies oh yeah really sweet start for me early pressure here for for phil who's only playing one basic island Bat Moon, this is a dream start for me. Actually, this is uh, what I want to do with my deck. Look at that, Phil already on 17, and now he's got his second blue to counter. But maybe this whole thing is going a little bit too fast for Phil. It's dropping to 14, can I follow it up? Unfortunately for me, there's no Zombie Master here. Untapping. Again, not really doing anything. On the other hand, I don't really have to. Look at Phil's life total down to 11. And there is a Bokrath with only two cards in hand remaining, but the Bokrath is a 4-4. There is a counter spell by Phil, and I think that was a very crucial counter spell, or else I could swing for 7 next turn. I mean, he's already on 11. My Scape Zombies has done 9 damage so far. How cool is that? Now he's tapping 4, cloning the Scape Zombies. Interesting. And what can I do? Playing a Zombie Master here, that means I'm giving it regeneration. 
And that means that Phil also has regeneration, but Phil, of course, does not have any black mana at his disposal, so that means he has to take the damage again. He's going to drop to 8. So I was really in luck here to top deck that Zombie Master. And this first game is looking very, very good for me here. We do see Phil playing a uh, Mishra's Factory, and then he's attacking here with the Scave Zombie. It also gets the bonus from the Bat Moon, so that means I'm now down to 17. There is a Dark Ritual, tapping one extra. There is an Evanerol's Disc. Remember, my zombies have regeneration. Well, actually, only my scave zombies, not my zombie master. And there, ooh, this is more important, I feel. This evil presence on the Mishra's factory. Of course, Phil can counter it here. Let's see if he's going to do that. I think if he has a counter spell, I would definitely counter it. There is a spell blast on the evil presence. And I am still attacking. I wonder if this is the right strategy. The Mishra's Factory, of course, still has Summoning Sickness, so that's probably why it's a good strategy. And also, it's a 3-4, of course, because of the Bad Moon, so this is a good attack. I'm attacking with a 3-4 and a 3-3, so this is really difficult for Phil here. I mean, he can take 6, six damage, drop to 2. That's actually what he's going to do here. Oh, his life total is really, really low. I mean, Phil kind of needs a miracle here. To get back here in game number one. Remember, it's just the first game. Still Artifact. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is so sweet. Those Steel Artifacts could do a lot of work, actually, in this matchup. I'm not... I don't think it's really going to save him here, but it is really cool. So he's going to activate his Mishra's Factory. He's probably going to double block. He can actually... Oh, no, he can double block because he's so low on life. That is really good news for me here. So I'm regenerating my Scave Zombie, and he's losing his Scave Zombie and his uh, Mishra's Factory here with the block. Because he's on two, he couldn't make the double block, because the double block on his Zombie Master would have been quite nice. Now, of course, he does have the Nevenoros Disc. He can pop the disc, but then I'm still going to have my Scave Zombies next turn to attack, and he's on two. So basically, he needs a creature. He's probably going to wait until my combat, and then attacks it in the combat step before damage is being dealt here attacking with both now we're probably going to see the activation here and uh oh i'm making a mistake here because i'm trying to regenerate exactly so phil's pointing that out zombie master doesn't have regeneration by itself if you have two zombie masters in play then it's a different story then they can give each other regeneration and here you would see a spell blast on my mind twist but now Phil needs a creature dance of many copying my scave zombies. This is hysterical. Oh, finding another zombie master. An incredibly good top deck for me because now Phil has to make the... Uh, has to block and my scave zombies now has regeneration. So that is really bad luck for, for Phil here that, who has kind of been with his back against the wall since turn one since I've dark ritualed into that scave zombie. And uh, will it be game now? He needs a control magic, I guess. If he takes my zombie master, that would be pretty sweet. Tapping four here. Will he be able to steal my zombie? Yes, that's what he's going to do. Oh, man, Phil, I like it. I like it. And there is an evil presence. And of course, yes, my zombie has swamp walk because of the zombie master. So the evil presence was enough to give the final two damage to Phil. That means that I'm winning this game number one, and we're going to our sideboards, and we'll catch back up to you in game number two. Game number two here. Let's see if I can find an early scave zombies again. That worked pretty well for me. But of course, I was on the play. This time Phil is on the play, which means that he'll have a second island next turn. Will of the Wisp, again a one drop, pretty nice. There is that second blue. That means that Phil can start countering my spells now. So I'm just passing turn here. Third island for Phil. Playing a tome here. So he can start doing some card selection. There is the Scave Zombies again that did so much work for me in game one. Now we see island number four. Will he activate his book or play a spell? He's activating the book. Again, the nice thing is... 
Um, this one only costs two to activate and then you can see he still has the two blue open to actually counter it. So that's pretty sweet. And he's gonna drop here to 18. And it's really nice to see the Scape Zombies doing so much work in these matchups. There is a Zombie Master again. So now I've got my regeneration zombie going. Tapping five here. Vesuvan Double Ganger. That is pretty sweet. I wonder what he's going to, uh, to copy. Because if he copies the Zombie Master, then he's basically giving my Zombie Master regeneration as well. So that might not be the best idea. On the other hand, it is a 2-3. So that means he can just block my Scape Zombies. Tapping five. Five. Oh, drain life. And I guess he did make it into the, uh, the zombie master, but I'm draining it away here. So that is pretty sweet. So I'm gaining three life and I'm able to attack him for four because his blocker is gone. Dance of many. Probably on the zombie master again. Not too bad for me because I can still attack with both and just regenerate them. And again, there is some pressure here on uh, on Phil. Tapping one here, will we see an evil presence? Okay, a weakness. That is pretty funny. Uh, but there is a spell blast, unfortunately for me. I really like weakness, by the way. I think it's a pretty decent card. It sees very little play, but remember, you can play weakness on any creature. It doesn't matter if it's black or artifact. And it's only, it's only one black and it gives um, minus two, minus one. So it really has a big impact. I mean, think for example, Sarah Angel, it's a four, four, but when, it's, when it has minus one, minus two, all of a sudden, uh, I'm sorry, minus two, minus one, all of a sudden it turns into a two, three creature. It's just not that impressive anymore. So weakness can really take, take out the power of a lot of creatures that see um, a lot of play in this old school meta. Now let's check out what Phil's gonna do. Again, the Steel Artifact, he did that in game number one also. I have to say it's pretty sweet. The Steel Artifact is doing so much work in, uh, in this matchup. I think the big problem here, of course, for Phil is that I always have that regeneration. So I can just regenerate my creatures, making it not really a good, a good thing for Phil to activate the disc. Let's see, tapping a black here. What am I gonna do? And, oh, I like this, an unholy strength, plus two, plus one. That means I now have a four, three zombie with regeneration, scape zombies, and a zombie master, both attacking here. Phil's on 14. So I'm really choosing to go aggro here, um, because remember when Phil pops the disc, Possibly next turn or the turn after. Uh, with the turn after, I mean in my in my turn. Look at that demonic tutor. Um, I'm actually going to lose that unholy strength, of course, to the Nevenerals disc. Putting one card aside here as an option. I wonder what that is. Maybe the thing is, if I'm going to look up another zombie master, um, I can play it out. But the problem is. Um, that then I don't have any black mana left to regenerate. So I need to keep my, my mana up to regenerate the Scape Zombie and to regenerate the Will of the Wisp. Maybe I took an Animate Dead, that could be an option. And Phil is letting his Dance of Many go here, really giving an indication that he's planning on using the Nevenerals Disc. Maybe this turn, maybe in my turn, depending on what, what he has in hand. And he's using the Tome, throwing a Steel Artifact in the bin here. He already has what he wants. Untapping, you're probably gonna attack. Now we're gonna see the activation of the disc. That's exactly what's happening here. So I'm regenerating my scape zombie and my will of the wisp. The good thing here for Phil is it also means that he doesn't take any damage. Playing a double evil presence. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder why I decided to use my Demonic Tutor for an evil presence. I think, now that I think about it, I think I again made that mistake again, assuming that my Zombie Master already had regeneration. I think that's the case. Interesting, because I've played this deck often, and I, I mean, I, I know how to play Magic, so... 
That is a pretty big mistake on my part. Anyway, let's see. Let's see how the game continues. We'll see another Lord of Atlantis here by Phil. I'm attacking. He probably doesn't want to trade. Actually, he wants to trade. Okay, that's pretty good news for me. But maybe it means he has another one in hand. Who knows? Actually, when he has another one in hand, he wouldn't trade. There's a little bit of a connection issue here. And here we see another Nevenerals disc. So he's probably not going to pop the disc to get rid of two evil presences. But this does make it pretty difficult for me. He's on 12, I'm on 23. I mean, things were looking pretty good for me, but I think that Demonic Tutor was a huge misplay if I really used it to look up an evil presence, and I think I did. That's a huge error on my part. Anyway, I'm kind of building up my hand again, not really doing anything because of that Nevenerals disc, and look at Phil, he's not really doing anything either. So we kind of have the same philosophy here. Let's just build up, rebuild our hand, basically. And there is a counter spell here from Phil on the Will of the Wisp. I don't really mind that much. What I kind of want to do in this situation is find a way to, um, to make it interesting for Phil to use his Nevenerals disc, but I don't want to commit too much on the board because I know it's going to be wiped away. Look at that. He's copying, copying the Mishra's Factory, and this is going to be really difficult. Playing against Mishra's Factories is kind of, uh, kind of hard. And it's now a 2-2. And after the end of turn, it turns back into a land again. So that means that when, um, as far as, as I understand, is when Phil would use his Nevenerals disc uh, after this turn. So if he would use it now, for example, um, then he wouldn't lose the clone because the clone is now a land. Let's see, playing Escape Zombie. So I'm really just trying to put some pressure on the board. Again, a counterspell. And I think this is really the game that, that Phil wants to play. There's no more pressure from me, so that means he can play as kind of his control game. He's still on 12, which is pretty decent. So, I mean, the game was kind of looking to be heading my way, but after that steel artifact on the Nevenerals disc, things kind of changed. And uh, it looks like he's just going to put some counters on those islands, indicating that they're actually swamps. And he's going to attack now with 2-2-2 uh, two, two, two Mishra's Factories. I'm going to block one and take two damage. He's going to go down down to 21. And he's tapping two more. Are we going to see, oh, another clone on another Mishra's Factory? Oh, this is starting to be problematic for me. I need my own Nevenerals Disc. Finding a Jam Day Tome, which is not too shabby. Using it straight away to dig for answers. And this is interesting now because will this be enough incentive for Phil to use his Nevenerals disc? Or does he have maybe another steel artifact in hand? That would be pretty brutal if he could just steal my book. And we're kind of talking about what would happen if he would strip mine my swamp and I'm kind of indicating then I would use my swamp to give a regeneration shield to my Will of the Wisp. And now he's attacking for six here. And I'm actually taking the damage. The reason I'm taking the damage is if I block and regenerate, he could then pop the disc and I can lose my Willow. But in hindsight, that's a bad decision on my part because he wasn't going to use the disc. Because if he would have used the disc in his turn, he would have killed all his own uh, Mishra's factory. So I should have just blocked here. So some sloppy play on my part, playing escape zombies here. And now I'm really thinking, do I want to use this mana or do I want to keep more mana open for my Willow? I actually decide not to. And I think I'm kind of, okay, I decide to do it. And there is a Royal Assassin. So I'm really going for it. I'm really trying to force Phil to use that disc, you know, and that's exactly what he does. So I'm regenerating my Willow. And everything is gone. And I only have one card in hand. I wonder what card it is. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure if this is the right decision for me to make to pop this disc. I am going to get 6 damage now by the Mistress Factory. So I'm actually going to drop to 9 here. Oh man, look at that. He's got Mistress Factory Heaven over there. And I've got a Lonely Willow to Wisp. Okay, at least now there's an Evanerals disc on my part. Hopefully he cannot count. Of course, he's going to Spell Blast. Wow. 
And he's actually pointing out because he cloned a land, he had enough mana to spell blast my Nevenerth disc. And I have to say, Phil, well done. You're playing this brilliantly. Really going for that Mistress Factory strategy, and uh, and you can kind of see it work here. It's it's quite nice. I mean, I'm not I'm not a big fan of, of Mishra's Factory because it's so hard to deal with. Um, but I do like seeing this. I do like this idea of using Dance of Many and Clone in this weird kind of Merfolk deck because you don't really expect it. So I'm blocking one, taking six, going to drop the three. And, you know, I love originality. And uh, I think it's quite nice a nice take on Merfolk. And there is a Nevenerals disc, but I think it's too little too late because, I mean, I'm on three... It's literally one turn too late. Ah, oh, that's it. That's it. Okay, so it is 1-1. One, one. Well done, Phil. I have to say, at the start of the second game, I thought, okay, I'm just going to win this again. But that did not happen. Really, really nice play with Phil choosing to kind of build his own cloned Mishra's Factory army. That's just crazy. And uh, it's a 1-1. One, one. So that means we actually have a game number three. How cool is that? So let's continue to game three. Game number three. Who is going to win this matchup? And it looks like Phil, is he taking a double mulligan here? Really? Yes, he is. So he's only got five cards in hand and I get to start. So that means it's looking pretty good for me. At least I don't have a one drop. That's some good news for Phil here. Um, playing an evil presence. I... So that means that Mishra's factory is being turned into a swamp here, indicating it with a counter. And he's playing an island, at least finding some lands. What am I? Another evil presence. Okay. So that's not really good for Phil here. Remember, um, in Mono Blue, a lot of your spells actually cost two blue. Like you've got Counterspell, Lord of Atlantis, of course, Control Magic, Steel Artifact, a lot of spells, Dance of Many, a lot of cards in Phil's deck. Ooh, to make matters worse, there's a Bokraft 3 3 Swamp Walk. Phil is on 18 right now. I can swing in for five. There's another evil presence. This is just ridiculous. At least there's a side blast taking care of the Bokraft. That's something. But look at that. He's got three swamps and Escape Zombies is doing work here. So he's actually already dropping to 14. Isn't he taking two damage too much here? I'm not quite sure. Oh, of course he took two damage from the side blast. No, it makes sense. So. He's on 14, gonna attack him here. It's gonna be on 12. Scave Zombie's doing a lot of work here again. Oh, this is dirty. This is dirty, a mind twist. Yuck. Okay, so he's gonna discard, I think, four cards here. I'm just gonna roll the dice to make sure it's done in a random order, but things are looking really bad for Phil. Basically, what he needs is a land drop and a Nevenerals disc. One disc can kind of get him back in the game, but. He's losing so many cards here. Look at that. Losing clones, control magics, all sorts of goodies. And just passing turn here. The only good news for Phil is that I only have one Scave Zombies. I don't have more. So I only have this little 2-2 to do the work for me. And there is the Nevenerals disc that I talked about. So this could kind of get him back into the game. Now remember, I'm playing with Mono Black. So I don't really have a lot of answers to artifacts here. And Phil's going to go on to 8 and he's going to play another blue. So at least he's finding enough land. I only have two cards in hand myself. Attacking it with the 2-2. Is he going to pop the disc? That's exactly what he's going to do. That means all those evil presents are gone. And he's also getting his Mishra's Factory back because of that. Oh, of course, another evil presence. This is number four. So, I mean, I, I have ran, ran out of evil presences now. And this is pretty sweet for me as well. A JM Day Tome, so I can start drawing some cards. What if Phil draws into a Control Magic, though? I mean, a Steel Artifact. Tacking you with Mishra's Factory, I'm going to drop to 18. Using the book, drawing an extra card. Tapping three for a Zombie Master. And playing out a Swamp. I'm actually taking it back. No idea why, because, yeah, exactly. Just play it out. I mean, Phil has seen it already. <laughs> Sometimes you want to keep up a land just for show, you know, especially when you're playing blue to pretend you have a counter spell in hand. Wow, steel artifact here on the JM Day Tome. This is pretty sweet, Phil. This is pretty solid and a dance of many. The interesting situation here is that the zombie masters give each other regeneration, but also swamp walk. So Phil now basically has an unblockable 
Sami Master. He's probably going to need it on blocking Judy, but still, it's, it's pretty sweet. So he's blocking here. Then I'm playing a Willow passing turn. He's going to untap, pay two for the Dance of Many, a card from the dark. It's an enchantment, and it brings back, it brings into play a token that's a copy of one of the creatures in play. And here you see him actually attack with the Zombie Master, and I can't block because of that Swamp Walk ability that he has. Playing another Zombie Master, we see a counter spell from Phil here. I'm on 16, Phil's on 8, but it's it's looking pretty pretty okay-ish for Phil actually. So he's he's managed to get himself back into this match after a mulligan of two and after a mind twist. So I'm actually pretty impressed here by Phil's deck. Attacking here, I'm gonna drop to 14. Playing, okay, this is pretty good for me. Playing an unholy strength on a 2-2 flyer so I can now attack with the 2-2. And I'm also attacking with the zombie master, kind of forcing him to use his mana so that he doesn't have enough mana anymore to use his jam day tome. That's why I'm doing this. Because then he has to activate his Mistress Factory, making it a 2-2, and then tap it into a 3-3, I mean. Uh, but that's going to take him all the mana, and then he can no longer activate his Tome. So basically, the Zombie Master is making sure that Phil is not drawing into an extra card. He's now on 6, by the way, after that attack of the 2-2 Flying Willow to Wisp. And things are, again, looking bad for Phil. Not as bad as they have, but, I mean, the problem is he's on 6. So three more swings by the Willow, and he's dead then again, Phil should have some answers to that, including a Control Magic, for example. Tapping four here. Okay, he's choosing to play a Nevenerals Disc. That will do the job as well. Because remember, I can regenerate the Will of the Wisp, but the Unholy Strength will fall off, so it will return into an, uh, into an old one. Interesting here that I'm not attacking with my Zombie Master. And is he not paying the cost or is he going to pay the cost? He's actually going to pay the cost. He's going to pay the two blues. He's going to keep his Zombie Master around. That makes sense because he's got Swamp Walk. So he can just deal another two extra damage. And it looks like he has got enough land anyway. So he's going to swing in here. Um, I, for some reason, I want to block even though it's been unblockable for almost the whole, actually the whole game. So yeah, I'm not really playing at my, at my sharpest. And uh, Phil, Phil's a really nice guy, by the way. It's really nice to play against him. We, we talk a lot about magic in between. You don't really see see that much here because I'm speeding up these matches. But there was just a lot of talk about other stuff and decks and ideas and, and whatnot. And now I'm regenerating my Zombie Master. Now I can do that because of Phil's Zombie Master. So they give each other regeneration in Swamp Walk. That's why I can do that. So I'm regenerating both of my creatures and I'm playing another disc. So I'm basically forcing Phil to use his Neverneural's disc just to get rid of one unholy strength. So that is pretty cool, isn't it? And there we see a strip mine. And I wonder what he's going to do. He's tapping a lot of land here. Clone, of course. So he's animating his Mishra's Factory and cloning his Mishra's Factory. So I'm getting deja vus from game number one. That wasn't nice at all, where he kind of built his own factory army. Is he going to do that again? At least he's got two now. And it makes sense because of that Nevenerals disc. And it's going to be interesting. Am I actually going to attack with the Zombie Master, forcing Phil to use one of his Mistress factories and then using my disc to kill one of the factories? That could be a line of play. It looks like I'm not doing it, though, playing another Willow and passing turn here. And Phil is also passing turn. We're kind of rebuilding our hands, it seems. There's a Scave Zombie, but a Spell Blast by Phil. That is unfortunate. That Scave Zombie would have been perfect to kind of just attack and, and poke at Phil and forcing him to activate. Oh, here's a Nightmare. And that Nightmare is huge because I've got nine Swamps, I think. Oh, Control Magic on the Nightmare. And I, I actually think the Nightmare should be dead right now. And... We, we made uh, a mistake here. You saw a little glitch as well. We made the mistake where we thought Nightmare has power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps in play, but it's actually to the amount of swamps that you control. And since Phil is now controlling the Nightmare, the Nightmare should become a 0-0 zero, zero and die. So there's kind of a weird situation here that I'm thinking, and Phil is thinking the same thing, that he is owning a, what is it, an 8-8 eight, eight or a 9-9 nine, nine Nightmare. So I'm not attacking at all, that's why. But the Nightmare actually should be dead. So it's quite an interesting situation here. 
And we're just keep drawing into our cards. And what am I going to do? Playing a Bok Rath here, 3-3 three, three Swamp Walk. And it's actually a 10-10. The Nightmare is a 10-10 Flyer, but, well, it is a 0-0, but we're thinking it's a 10-10 Flyer. And going for my Graveyard, probably have an Animate Dead in there, if I'm doing that. Playing another Swamp, so it's now an 11-11. It's just ridiculous. We're both just drawing cards. We're kind of in a standstill here. I'm playing as Cave Zombies. What I'm trying to do is build up an army that's big enough to kind of swing in there and find the right moment to activate that disc. Let's see what's going to happen. And I wonder if at some point in the game we discover that the Nightmare should actually not, not be in the game at all. Because that would change a lot. And I remember now thinking, because I have that Royal Assassin... So the thing is what Phil probably wants to do with the Mistress Factories is bump them, right? But then he has to tap the factory. So then I could use my Royal Assassin. So it's quite an interesting uh, board state. So I'm really now trying to calculate if I attack, what is going to happen? Um, is it a good idea to use my disc? Is it not a good idea to use my disc? And it looks like I'm actually deciding to attack here. Um, of course, what I have to keep in the back of my mind, because we're thinking that this Nightmare is as big as all the Swamps in play, right? So I'm thinking that Phil has this huge 12-12 flyer. So I'm thinking I'm going to attack. I'm definitely going to lose one of my creatures. So I think it would make sense for Phil here to block the Zombie Master, probably. Or the Bokrath. I think I would go for the Zombie Master. And then he's going to activate his... Factories, but now of course in response before damage is being dealt. Okay, look, I think we're discovering what's going on here. That took a long time. I've been playing this game for more than well, actually for 25 years. That took a really long time. Sorry for everybody watching. Uh Phil and myself were just having too much, too much fun. Um so that changes the meta completely. So I'm kind of rearranging my combat. I'm now deciding not to attack with the zombie master anymore. Instead I'm just attacking with my 3-3 three, three Bokrath and my 2-2 two, two Scave Zombies with Regeneration. And what he's going to do, this is interesting. He chooses to double block the Scave Zombies and, or sorry, double block the Bokrath. And he's just choosing to pump everything. So he's saying, you know what, it doesn't really matter. You can only kill one creature anyway. So I'm deciding to kill... I think I'm actually going to trade now for the Mistress Factory. That's probably what's going to happen, right? So I'm going to lose my Barcraft. He's going to lose two Mistress Factories to this exchange. So it's a pretty good deal for me. Oh, I'm actually not because Escape Zombies is a 2-2. So yeah, this is this is what what is happening. Yeah. So I'm using my Royal to kill one of the Mistress Factories. The other Mistress Factories is, kill, is killed by the Bokrath because it's also a 3-3 and he gets to keep one. Things are looking, looking very dire here for Phil. Can he pull it off? Can he do another trick? I, I have to say, Phil, you're, you're a hard man to kill. <laughs> this control deck is kind of sweet. Look at that. Another Mistress Factory. Oh, these factories, man. All these factories. I, I, I'm just going to attack with the, with the Scave again. The, the nice thing here is the Royal Assassin combination because he wants to animate. But I realize it's not going to work because what he can do as well is he can animate his Mistress Factory that's been in the game and then tap the new Mistress Factory to pump it up without making it into an assembly worker. So this is interesting. I'm actually attacking with everything here. So that means I'm probably wanting to pop the disc that's kind of a decision so I'm kind of forcing him to activate one of his factories and I, I think this could be a good decision because and I'm, I'm taking the royal assassin back because I want to use it if he wants to block it on the zombie master like it does make sense but th the main reason for me to attack here is because of that jam day tome because he's going to start drawing cards again and I don't want that so he's actually animating them both blocking both the creatures or not. It's kind of hard to follow here what decisions Phil is making. Looks like he's animating them both. 
blocking both, tapping them to make them 3-3. In response, I'm going to activate my Royal Assassin to kill one of them. And I'm going to rege regenerate my Scape Zombies. And I'm actually deciding not to pop the disc. I'm thinking, okay, he's, he's down one factory. This is not too bad. I can wait a little bit longer with using my Neverworld's Disc and keep my Royal Assassin around because my Royal Assassin is extremely useful. And also when I use my Neverworld's Disc, I'm going to lose my Zombie Master as well. And Phil's going to draw another card here. And he's doing some card selection now. Both books in play and he's saying, nah man, there's no way that I can, <laughs> I can win from this. Showing his hand. And I'm actually asking, I remember I'm asking, let's just, uh, let's just finish it to see where this is going. So now I'm, I'm attacking again. I mean, he is on four. And all he can do really is, is activate his factory again. Um, he's making it into a 2-2, blocking this cave zombie. So I'm going to regenerate this cave zombie. And it's going to be... It's going to die, right? And he's going to take two damage from the Zombie Master. He's going to go to two. And I'm also playing an Animate Dead here. Bringing back the Nightmare. Okay, that is pretty cool. My huge Nightmare. And I'm probably going to swing in the Nightmare for the win here. Let's see. Tapping for a card. I mean, if Phil can survive this, what does he need? A Disc and a Twiddle? He doesn't play with Twiddle, though, but a disc and a Twiddle would kind of do it for him. Although I can still... Re anyway, it's... <laughs> I'm finally... Oh, man, I'm finally winning this. What a game, man. Thank you, MTG Phil, for this match. Game 3 was just ridiculous. And I just want to remind everybody that Phil started with five cards in hand. He needed to take a double mulligan. And um, yeah, I'm sorry for that mistake with the nightmare. That was pretty silly. But uh, but hey, man, it's, it's, it's all in the game. It's all good. Thank you very much, uh, Phil, for this game. And thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks. Um, I've now actually won my second match with my zombie disco deck. So that's actually, that's doing better than I expected. That's pretty sweet. So um, maybe I can make it to top eight. Join me next week. Um, and that's going to be on a Friday again, where I will play my last match in the group stage. And I think I need at least one game victory in that matchup. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that by leaving a like, leaving uh, a comment. Maybe you can let me know what is your biggest misplay ever in a game of magic or maybe misunderstanding rules wise. Uh, that you discovered it like halfway through the game like we just did with the nightmare that would be pretty nice uh, to hear from you um, if you're not a subscriber yet please subscribe that really helps youtube finds that amazingly important you can also click a notification bell uh, then you can get um get a heads up whenever i post another video i do that by the way every tuesday friday and every sunday i post a mail day video um, you can also sponsor the show and you can be become a patron of the show we've got our own discord we've got our own events like this event lord of the jank so if you like what you see and you want to join events like this you can join timmy talks on patreon and then you can join in all the fun so there's a link popping up right now click on the link and that will take you to the timmy talks patreon page talking about that let's go to the end scroll and let's see all the amazing fantastic patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks.
Transfigured to somber kazee. 